Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a story of a man who did this when he found out his wife has been cheating on him with a church member. Here's the full story with multiple updates. My wife was having an affair. I had no idea, but she got careless and once I got suspicious I uncovered it rather quickly. It's been three weeks since that dark day. We are trying to reconcile and are undergoing counseling. I stayed that first night in a hotel, but went back home the next day. We have two children under 13. I'm optimistic but this has been the most painful course of events of my life. I have received advice that I should move out for a short time, like a week, to gain some personal perspective on the situation without her presence clouding my judgment. I still love her very much, and also to show her what life would look like without me. The problem is I don't want to move out, I don't want to be away from her. Also we're trying to keep this away from our kids, and me being away for a week would be awkward to explain. Any feedback would be appreciated. To those suggesting she move out, I can move in with my parents for a week. She would have nowhere to go that didn't cost dollars. I learned of the term hysterical bonding yesterday when I discovered the surviving infidelity subreddit. I'm afraid what my wife and I have been going through is textbook hysterical bonding. The sex has been intense to say the least. Now we are early in this process, and she has admitted she still has some feelings for her AP. She wants to be honest with me, and she says her feelings for him lessen every day. After learning of this hysterical bonding as it applied to us, something shifted inside me. I told her no more sex, not until she is through having feelings for this man, not until her heart is true to me. I've been torn about telling the AP's wife. My first reaction was if I were her, I wouldn't want to know. My wife told me today that a P had a previous affair like 12 years ago, not with my wife, that she caught him and forgave him. So this guy's a total POS and she needs to know. My only remaining concern is that he would retaliate in some crazy way if I told his wife. My wife has indicated his life would be ruined if she found out, not that I care about that. I don't want this guy pulling in my driveway with a shotgun or something. Thoughts? Edit. My wife will be telling OBS. I will be with her. It will go a long way with me, her showing her commitment to the R. But I understand we have a lot further to go. We may be alright, we may not. Thank you all for your input. Four weeks out today since I uncovered her affair. Married 14 years, two kids. I only discovered this sub a week ago and we saw MC last week for the first time. Our second appointment is today. We are also taking steps to inform OBS today. I regret the delay but I just didn't know what to do about OBS when I was paralyzed with grief myself. The R is going well I think, although I am constantly triggered unexpectedly. I now know from reading posts here that this R is going to take a long time. Like years, I guess all affairs have some things in common. The lying, the premeditation, the selfishness, the self-delusion. I just wanted to thank everyone here for their advice and support. It's been so critical to hear from other people who've gone through what I've been going through. Good luck to all. My WW's affair was with someone from her church. We decided that the best or least bad way to tell OBS was to tell the pastor, give him a letter from both of us to OBS, and kind of let him handle it. Well the pastor wouldn't do it for legal reasons, but coincidentally, OBS was at the church while we were meeting with him. He asked us if we wanted him to get her so we could tell her. I know from thinking about it that finding out from the AP would be the worst scenario pain and anger wise, so I sent my wife to the car and the pastor got me and OBS together. And I told her, and it was horrible, but not maybe the way I would have expected. She was calm and unsurprised to see me. She asked me to please stay because she had some questions. She read the letters. My wife had told me she suspected, so this wasn't the shock it had been for me. What shook me was OBS describing why she suspected my wife. It was obvious to her my wife was infatuated with her husband. Even before the affair, I don't really go to church so I never saw my wife and AP together. The way she looked at him. She would look at her husband's phone and see a few too many texts they performed on the church band together so they had a cover for communicating. The way my wife would wait for a pee in the parking lot after practice. How she would always park right next to him. Now I knew my wife asked to start seeing him, initiating the affair. But to hear this perspective, the way she shamelessly threw herself at this man, it's hard to take. It didn't matter to her that a P was married. It didn't matter to her that she was married. It didn't matter to her that she had kids. It didn't even matter to her that a P's wife already suspected. She wanted this guy and nothing was going to stop her. I almost feel bad for a P. He's 15 years older than my wife, he never had a chance. So here I am again, questioning everything. Details, my WW had an emotional affair that escalated to physical affair a month later. Physical affair lasted 10 weeks when I caught them. 
She's been NC since then, although she admitted she still had feelings for him as of two weeks ago. She claims to be over him now. We are reconciling and it's been a roller coaster. Edit. My wife left the church forever the day after I caught her. That was one of my conditions. OBS and AP still go there. As far as consequences for my wife, this will be hard on her. This will likely get out at that church. And even though she's left the church, many people who she cares about will know about her affair. It took commitment and courage for her to do that, if anything else. I wish I had discovered this sub sooner because the people here have been so kind and helpful. This sub has been far more productive than the two sessions we've had with a MC. Now nothing like this has ever happened to me, so I don't know the proper procedure. Many people in this sub have told me that it's too early to make the decision of even wanting to reconcile. That I'm still in shock and not ready to make that basic decision. So if I may ask then, when is the right time? I in no way have forgiven my wife. And she knows this. I tell her every day that this is going to take a long time. Like years. I tell her that there's still every possibility I just won't be able to accept what she's done. And we will have to separate. We are not rug sweeping. We talk, text, email each other all day talking about this whole situation. My wife is genuinely remorseful. It has taken her some time to fully grasp the enormity of what she's done. And that may be an issue, I understand. But now she is horrified. Telling OBS really dropped that final brick. She quit that church per my conditions, but everyone there will find out about the affair, and her reputation will suffer greatly with many people she cares about. I realize that the woman I married, the faithful one, is gone forever. We're not saving our marriage. It's already dead. She destroyed it when she cheated. We're rebuilding our marriage on top of the corpse of the old one. And you know what? It may not work. I fully understand that. But I get a lot of people telling me we're getting ahead of ourselves, we should still be sleeping in separate rooms, etc. Again, thank you so much for any input, advice. We are four and a half weeks out from D-Day. My WW went with me to tell OBS last Thursday. Predictably, AP went into Insano Damage Control, minimizing his role in the affair, sending my wife a semi-threatening text, telling OBS my wife was crazy, my wife blackmailed him when he wanted to end it, lying. Now that OBS has ended it with AP, he is trying to contact my wife. Yes, she has blocked him on everything, but his first text somehow got through. Her email is included in the block, but blocked emails automatically go to trash, so you can still access them. I discovered this myself when I was going through her junk email. After some research, this is in fact how blocked emails work, which is kind of ludicrous to me. So now he's sent several more emails begging her to call him, and even though they go to trash we still see them. I sent him a nasty text yesterday telling him to leave my family alone. But like the true POS this guy is, he sent another email an hour later. Now I'm thinking about letting my WW email him a F off letter approved by me. She's been NC since D-Day. She would word it in a way he would know it was from her, but still be decisive about leaving her the hell alone. Understandably, I have misgivings about this whole situation. As always, thank you for any advice. We are attempting R and things are volatile but going well. We are an IC and MC, but with any affair and successful R, the BS is going to have to accept and live with a lot of hard truths about what the WS did. I've got a pretty long checklist and it's encouraging that most of them seem at least manageable. I love her a lot, but have a few that I'm worried I'll never be able to accept, no matter what some counselor tells me. So I'm looking for advice from those with similar experiences. When your WS was the pursuer in the affair, sure, she didn't tie the guy up and force him, but my WW pretty much threw herself at this guy. When part of the allure of the affair was the deception itself, she got off on the secrecy, talking to this guy's wife like she was her friend, gloating to her sister, like it was playing a game. But the WS only stopped when caught. She had so many opportunities to stop as boundary after boundary was crossed. Her and AP even complained of the predicament they were in. Gross. Thanks for any input. One of my conditions for the R was full and total access to her phone, which I think is pretty common. She was texting and calling this guy at all times of the day, sometimes even with me sitting right next to her, sometimes while I was upstairs asleep. Her sister was her confidante in the A. My wife sent her screenshots of texts between her and AP for safekeeping, because my wife would delete them. Her sister totally enabled this A, encouraging her and telling her no regrets and no guilt. I admittedly have a low opinion of her sister. My wife even tried to contact AP to say goodbye through her sister 10 days after D-Day, despite my condition of NC. Because of her sister's collaboration in this, I don't want my WW to talk or text her without me in the room. 
I still have trust issues with my wife and I will never trust her sister ever again. If she was just her friend I'd probably demand she cut her out completely. Her sister and another friend who knew about the affair are both saying I'm being too extreme. That my WW deserves her privacy. I've about had it. I could have kicked my wife out of the house. I could have served her with divorce papers. I could be doing everything in my power to gain full custody of my children. It's of course been bumpy. But I've tried my best to even be compassionate and understanding to my wife, which she certainly doesn't deserve. I cannot realistically expect my wife to cut her sister out of her life. The other friend lives across the country and I don't see as a big threat. I just don't know how to deal with these kind of people. Edit. For what it's worth, my wife is compliant and doesn't think I'm being extreme. Her sister and her friend have never been married, and that has something to do with them not grasping the enormity of the situation. That and maybe they're just not very moral people. I did something really stupid last night. I had a little too much to drink and I sent my wife's AP a threatening email. You won't see me coming mother effer. I sent this from my wife's email because I knew he would read it. The affair's been over for over 10 weeks. I'm not a violent man and have absolutely no intention of harming or confronting him. He replied a couple hours later asking why is somebody threatening him. I was disgusted with what I'd done and emailed him back saying it was me that sent it, not my wife, and that I wasn't violent and we both never wanted to see him again. Now I know it's illegal to threaten someone even over email or text, so I'm worried. Since it's my wife's email account I sent it on, I'm worried for her too. I of course will take full responsibility if there's any unfortunate legal problems. And by the way, I haven't been following him or messing with him in any other way. Anyone have any experience with this? I know states have different laws. I hate that I've given him any kind of leverage, that he could file a criminal complaint against me. I have no criminal record other than traffic stuff, and I haven't had a ticket in 16 years. I'm about 12 weeks out from D-Day. R has been bumpy but overall I feel pretty good about the future. I've researched a lot on this sub and other resources, and there seems to be common setback in the process around 12 months from D-Day. Sharp increase in marital tension and number of reminders increases. That's from AffairRecovery.com. Does anyone have any insight into this? I mean one obvious answer is just the dates reminding us of the trauma of D-Day. Overall our R is going well, but lately I've had trouble with pain shopping. A few days ago I began looking at Google Photos to see pics taken by my wife and I during the affair. Nothing illegal but pics of us on date nights and our kids and day trips we took together as a family. Pics of a concert we went to together. There was a video that I took at church of our daughter playing guitar and the AP was up on stage with her. This is nothing new but man did I get mad. I get upset and my wife sees what I'm doing and she gets upset. Why am I still doing this to myself? Fast forward to this morning and I'm checking phone. Text logs, I unfortunately have to keep checking she's not contacting AP. And I start looking at text logs during the affair. Again nothing new. And I notice how many texts were when my WW was at work and it's like 25 to 35 texts a day. Now my WW is busy and when I text her at work sometimes it's hours before she texts me back. I might get two texts a day from her at work. But she's texting this effing guy all day. So now I'm mad again. This is nothing new or earth shattering. Of course she texted this loser a lot, so why am I reopening these wounds? OP, your significant other has demonstrated their capacity to deceive you, effortlessly, regularly, concerning any matter. As a result, you are currently inclined to doubt the authenticity of everything. You are in the early stages of a journey that will extend for a minimum of two years, and potentially longer. This marks the initial phase of the process. As your partner exhibits signs of progress, the compulsion to delve into the past will diminish. Good luck and stay strong. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like my videos then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.